Hey guys, it's makeup tutorial time again. Okay. Hey, hot miss fan. Oh my god. Yes! There you go. Woo! Bipolar disorder. My shit's not in order. I'm overweight. Very, very simple. I used this. Okay. Camera cut out again. So what I did leave off with as I am going back to the um, videos is that um, we were talking about how I just found out that um, the dude that lived at the house had got on to my Facebook, hacked it, and deleted all the videos and stuff. So any kind of proof that I had that these guys were being aggressive and um, just, just all out being perfect assholes um, I didn't have any proof I had a few photos on my on my phone to show that I did have you know X amount of things that were on the porch um, but yeah that's that's all I had so I finished up with my storage I locked it up so all I needed to do was go back to the house get the rest of the stuff that was on the porch and be done I was done I was done you know, I'm free of this person. I mean, this was basically a breakup. This was a friendship breakup. And if anybody's been in a friendship breakup, they're almost nastier than a regular breakup. So, um, I mean, I, oh my God, I can't believe, um, that this is happening to me, but it was. So I had to get it done. I drove all the way back, which took me another 20, 30, 40 minutes to get there, probably about 35 minutes. Um, I got there and all my stuff is gone and they're gone. Nope, nothing's there. So I go over to that guy's house that lived a little bit up in front of them and I asked them and they were like, he was like, actually, as soon as you left, he goes, I couldn't see them because he's got all those flowers in the back. Um, he said, I couldn't see them, but I could hear them. As soon as you left, you could hear her, hurry up, hurry up. And he said, you could hear things getting tossed into the back of a truck. And um, I'm just assuming that she, he meant all of my stuff. And um, either A, she took it somewhere and she was going to go back for it. She's a really big fan of selling things online. So either A, she threw it somewhere, hid it somewhere, and then, um, and then she was going to go back for it. Or she just went somewhere and randomly just threw it away. Just be bitch. Just me, bitch. Um, I called the cops. The cops ha helped me none whatsoever. I explained my situation. Um, there was nothing. You could, you could, you like say, "Hey, where's her stuff? Where is it?" And he was not gonna believe. He didn't believe me whatsoever. He thought he's like, "This is a civil situation." I'm like, "You're still a cop. You're still supposed to be here." And um, I wanted to make a report. He wasn't a really big fan, so he didn't even take the report. He didn't even believe me. Oh, side note: before the police officer officer showed up, um, she had saw she had seen me. Um, talking to the neighbor when she drove back up because she thought maybe I'd just be gone but then she turned around and she went and got one of those like um, community uh, security guards and he seemed to be on my side and he's like well where do you think he put she put it if she had it and I'm like a uh, it's probably in the truck because the truck uh, was just a regular truck but the truck bed had like a cover like a cap and so I'm like assuming there's maybe stuff under there. I don't know. That's the first thing, first place I would look. I don't know where she put it. I have no idea. He he so, was just like went back over there and it's like, can I see in your truck? And she wasn't gonna let him, but he's like, just let me see in the truck. And so she opens it up, and my towels and my TV were in there. And he's like, just give it back to her. And so the kid, the guy, brings it back, and I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. And he's just like, you know. But all my other stuff is gone. All anything that had to do from my waist down was gone. Underwear, socks. Um, I for some reason had my shoes, so I had all my shoes, um, pants everything it was gone so I was kind of stuck with whatever I had um, on me and I think I had one or two pairs of pants um, and maybe like a pair or so underwear whatever I didn't have much um, this is like stuff that had been in the dirty laundry that I had grabbed 
and put it in the truck or whatever. So I only had so much. But she had taken all of it. And, and this callously just threw it away. Just to be vindictive ass. Because I didn't spend time with her. How stupid is that? Um, that's where communication comes from, girlfriend. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, I was just like, whatever. So when the community security guard came, that's when I was still more, I was really pissed. So then that's when the police officer showed up. He didn't want to show up. He was pissed off he had to so when he gets there he's all pissy and so he's blaming me for it and he wasn't being a police officer he was just being a fucking jerk um so he didn't do anything he's like you're gonna have to take her to court i don't have proof i don't have proof i you know i'm not stupid you have to physically see them take it or you gotta have somebody that knows or that has seen it or whatever and the guy that next to me he heard it but he didn't see it so that's not gonna help so it's a waste of time and energy um time and energy that I didn't want to have to deal with her. So I just left it. There was nothing I could do. I was very butthurt and I was very upset about it and I couldn't believe she did it, but I knew she did. So um, I took my tail between my legs and I went back to that guy's house and um, I mean, he felt bad for me because he knew what the hell was going on. But there was, I mean, we're not like boyfriend, girlfriend or anything. So it was kind of stupid. Um, embarrassing, but I'm glad he was there. He gave me somebody, some place where I can kind of crash when I was in limbo. So it was kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that was that. And um, the next day I packed up. And I thanked so, him. And yeah, he was kind of upset that there wasn't going to be a relationship because I wasn't going to be there. And I ended up moving in with my freaking ex-husband. That's fun. So, yeah, I moved in and I put all my stuff in my storage. The storage was in Bellingham, which is north of Seattle. It's almost, it's like... 20 minutes or so to the Canadian border and so when I moved back I moved back into a place called Spanaway. It's Spanaway Puyallup where, I, where I'm usually at anyway when I was living out there. So it wasn't too far from where I'm familiar. So I ended up um, moving in there. My plan was to get a job, um, save as much money as I could and then move out and get my own place. So that was the plan. Um, I got there on the, t I don't even know, I think all this bullshit started on the 23rd. I didn't, I finally got, I finally got, um, it was like a couple days before my birthday. My birthday's on the 26th of May, so it was just a couple, a day or two beforehand. And so, yeah, I was kind of feeling great for myself. <laughs> um. But during that time, I was getting settled, I was pissed, and there was a, um, uh, there was a page on Facebook that was called Bellingham Blast, and I, um, wrote on there, the page basically is, um, blasting anybody that did you wrong, or what you think did you wrong, um, if you want to complain about a grocery clerk or whatever, you can go on there and people can go in there and see, say stuff. And there's a lot of bullshit. And I was feeling very petty and I didn't give up. So <laughs> I was just like, uh, uh I sat there and I told every single one of her, um, secrets and everything. No, that's not my style. So don't, don't get buck with me. It's not my style, but I was so fucking pissed. I was so mad, um, that, that somebody that I trusted for years and years and years, that was my friend, that was my sister. And she just goes off and gets crazy because I couldn't spend time with her. Like it, what scares me is if our friendship can't, can't work itself out, how in the hell am I going to find somebody that's going to work anything out with me as a couple? You know, that's some scary shit when you think about it. Let's be honest. Like, really, like a girl, another, another, your friend can't, like, work it out with you? Oh, just 
messes with your psyche. So anyway, yeah, I was, I was butt hurt, but I was pissed and I was petty. And if she wants to be petty, I'm going to be petty too. I told all of her secrets, every single last one of them. And she had some good ones. As a friend, I would never judge you. I would never, um, uh, uh, mm make you be the butt of a joke or anything like that but what i will do is i will hide your secrets and i will take care of anything that is a, a bad indiscretion or something i'm not one to judge all that stuff but i will put it out so everybody else can if you're going to be a bitch about it for that one time that's not my style it was that day so whatever i've gotten a lot of flack from that everybody's like you should have just left alone it's like no no this is the reason why she gets so in, uh, why she's uh, had so many issues with other people it's because everybody always left it alone sometimes everybody needs a little smack upside the fucking head for them to realize that they're gonna get they're gonna get revenged on or something so you know people need to calm down she thinks she can do whatever she wants nobody's gonna say anything blah 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 blah, blah. and i thought no so I wrote it on there. I post, I copied it and I posted it on her, um, on her, uh, on that, that blast site. And then I put it on mine and I even tagged her on it. Um, but by then she'd already like deleted me. Those guys have I, either a, I deleted and blocked them or vice versa. I don't remember. It was long ago. So anyway, that was that. Then I get a call from my brother about a day or so before my birthday, and he's like, hey, I found out you're living with your ex-husband. If anybody knows me, I'm not the biggest fan of him. He is basically my family, and he always has been and always will be, and I'm very thankful that he was there to help me out when I needed it. Many a times he's been there for me, um, but uh, it's not... It's not the best when you have to ask your ex-husband, like, hey, can I stay with you? No, he lives on his own, so it's not like he's got a wife or girlfriend or anything, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, so, <laughs> my brother gets this weird, like, hey, you know, like, hey. He's all funny, and he's laughing at me because he thinks it's funny. I haven't seen my brother in, like, 14 years at this time. And he's like, why don't you take a trip? Why don't you come out um, out here, stay here for a little bit. I haven't seen you in a while. You can see the kids, blah, blah, blah. And you can kind of figure out what you want to do. I really think he thought he was I was going to move out there. Um, but it's kind of hard. My kids are there. My kids are full-grown adults. They function. They do what they need to do. But I still feel like I need to be there to help them. Um, I don't know, drive them around or, or um, make sure they're, they've, been fed you know it's it's any mama out there knows especially with uh kids that have grown up and they're doing their own thing i i literally get sick to my stomach thinking that i'm not there and i haven't been there like it's a it's a it's a mind fuck if you want if you want to really want to know so yeah but i talked to my brother and i was like hey yeah so um one of my boys and his uh, his um friend fix my radiator they redid the radiator thing i cleaned out the car um got it all looked up as far as like the hoses and well what i thought was the inside like tune up um everything looked really good the tires you know oil and all that stuff so i got everything taken care of and everything so it was ready to go and um mind you i don't have air conditioning in it but who needs it when you're in washington right so um, yeah, that was it. I packed up everything. I left some stuff at the exes because he had the space and a couple of my boys were there. So I was able to leave it with them so they can, you know, like help me out. Um, and I packed up basically clothes, makeup, um, you know, like my laptop and computer, my, my dog, um, and all that stuff yeah oh side note that was some of the stuff that was in the crap that she stole was all of finney's clothes and if anybody has bought clothes for dogs they know that's expensive and you know it's not like i bought them all at once i buy it one year this year whatever so that's kind of disappointing because he had some cute clothes but anyway that was some of the stuff too um but yeah packed it up and um 
I don't, it was a couple days after my birthday. I, it took me about four days. I, I left on Tuesday or Wednesday. I think I left on Tuesday. So the plan was to go from Washington across to Illinois, but this stubborn bitch wanted to go to Oregon because I wanted to see the ocean. So I ended up going and driving and I, I left late too. So I, you know, I'm on my own schedule, obviously, but <laughs> I left like at three something three four I don't know it takes about five six hours to get there and we had stopped because Finney I was so freaked out thinking because um, I'll show a picture it shows uh, how Finney's in the back and I'm in the in the front so he was let loose to do whatever and um, he was supposed to be sitting at the passenger side because um, I'm his best friend and it's my ride what okay stupid mom joke he would go back there and i was always like oh my god there's like soft stuff there like clothes like i have baskets of clothes in there like a, um, a, a blanket my he likes to pee on soft stuff so i'm like he's gonna pee on everything he didn't he was fine he just wanted to go cuddle um so i was like paranoid and that he was gonna pee everywhere but we always had to stop to let him pee which now that we've traveled many a times, I know that I don't need to stop as much. Um, the plan was, though, is that we stopped every time the gas tank got to about half a tank. This is my first time going anywhere by myself. First time. I'm like 40-something years old at this point. Um, I'm excited and I'm scared, but... I know I can do it, you know, kind of thing. And there's, I mean, like, what the hell? Why not? I've had a certain fire of wonderless um, throughout my life. So this was my time. And I was excited and just like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. So, yeah. But I was going someplace that was going to be safe because my brother is uh, my brother, you know. Um, so, yeah, I packed everything up. And then we drove, but we drove to Oregon, and we stopped a couple places, and then we got to Seaside, and I couldn't help myself anymore. I um, stopped, and I got Finney out to the ocean um, on the sea, or sea, on the um, sand, and he loved it. He seemed like a natural, actually. He's going through it. He wasn't really a big fan of... Um, having the waves come to him because he's like what the you know um but he had such a good time and um i needed that sea air i need it now i am so landlocked right now <laughs> Um, so we did that and I had a friend I was going to meet up with and it was getting later. So finally I get into um, Manzanita and my friend works at one of the uh, inns and he was able to get me um, a, um, an, a room. So I was actually just going to go by the beach and sleep out there you know i mean like in my truck or something because uh this girl is going old school so i wasn't going to get like hotel rooms or anything um i couldn't afford it so i really needed to um strap up and stuff but i had the suv i'm only 5'1 so it was pretty plausible it wasn't like i was gonna be all squished up or something so, but he got me an in, so I was able to hang out in the hot tub and um, uh, get to visit with him and, um, you know, just have a nice relaxing me time, you know, before, like, before I left, I was at the house with kids and the ex-husband. So this time was really nice to be able to just really calm down and relax. So that's what I did. It was really nice. We're off. I'm already sweaty from putting everything into the truck. It's crowded in there, but it all fit. Me and Finny are ready.
Hey guys, I made it. I'm still on the Washington side, but I'm going over the Astoria Bridge here in a second. So I thought I'd, I'd take the pup out for a potty break. Where is he at? He's been pretty good so far. But yes, look at it. <sighs> it's exactly what I wanted. It smells so good. I'm back home. Okay, I couldn't help myself. It's Finney's first time on the beach. I think he likes the sand. We're in Seaside now. Yay! <sighs> Loving it. <laughs> he likes it out here. I miss this so much. Look at, they're having a fire on the beach. Ugh. And I think Finnegan's a sea dog. Look at him in his sand. That's it. I'm moving back. Ooh. <laughs> it's cold. My friend hooked me up with a very nice hotel. Um, you walk in. There's actually a security door that you walk in to a little cottage. And there's two rooms. And there's two rooms. Um, this one's a cottage. I got the hummingbird. There's me. And this is the room. When you walk in, you've got a door to the patio. It's very simple. There is the bed, hot tub, bath, um, then a little area. Bathroom's in there, fireplace, and it's just a really small area, but, but for free, this is amazing. I knew I had fun friends. But anyway, isn't that cute? It's great. And this is a bathroom. There's not much fun fare to this. It's just a shower and bathroom to yeah. But I told him I wasn't gonna I told him I wasn't gonna go into this, but I'm thinking I might have to. Yeah. Might as well, right? Anyway, that is the adventure today. I might snap a little bit more um, just to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm actually a little burnt out, but it was nice to get a uh, filler of what's going on and how I'm going to uh, do things. So um, I might hang out here a little bit in the morning and um, shove off for the big adventure um, about noon or so. I forgot to show you the um, back. Let's see if we can go back there. to show you in the morning because you can't see and there's not a light but it's just a cute little patio with a few chairs i better walk this too all right i couldn't help myself i am hooking it up it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and i even got the so romantic me and finny he's not impressed really then again finny 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 Hello? Are you too busy watching TV or what? He doesn't want to talk to me. Back to the tub. Oh yeah! Just living the life. Adventure time! Now I'm by the fire and I'm watching Dudley's Catch. The next day, um, I drove out. We went b back by the beach again just to hang out and take photos or whatnot. And um, that's the last time that I've seen the ocean 
uh, Oregon Ocean Beaches, so I'm kind of sad about that. That's been four years. It is, it hurts, it hurts right there. It hurts a lot. So, I get on the road. I'm on the road, it's time to go. I end up driving, um, oh, and side note, it had, it was overwhelmingly hot that year in the Washington, Oregon area. Um, it was summer, obviously, well, what? It was late May, June, in that time, and we were having, like, it was really hot, like 85, 92, something like that, it was really hot. Well, that's really hot for me. <laughs> and everybody in Washington. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really hot. So, it was kind of nice, but what the reason I'm telling you that is because it started getting really hot and all the windows are down because I don't have air conditioning, and that's fine. Uh, but we, the route I was going, I was going um, across Oregon the way it is because I was supposed to go across um, Washington, like into Idaho and stuff. But since I went to Washington or to Oregon, I'm on the coast of Oregon, so I had to go. Um, across Oregon to get but I didn't go like deep in Oregon and stuff I stayed on the edge it actually made me go back up from the coast to go back to the like the gorge the Columbia River I think it's Columbia River on that um, a trek of the woods and I just went there all day that took me all day because we left at about 930 10 um, and that that organ, the whole organ, took practically all day to get through. I finally stopped in Idaho, and this is where it gets um, fun, because it's hot and stuff, and I stopped, and this particular place was like a gas station and like a subway on the other side of it, like another building, but they're still connected, and um, right there, right here on the road, there's like a little drive-in road, but there's a huge thing of hotels or whatever. Well, they were fancy hotels to where they had a security guard that would drive around and look and stuff. So it was pretty late. It must have been like 10 or something. And um, I parked and I went out there and I had already been looking at um, like rest stops and stuff to stop at. And I actually was just there to like get gas or whatnot. And so I had asked her the gal there um like if that rest stop was pretty nice or if it was shady or where would she recommend and she's like you know if you park right there in front of um uh subway they got that security guard i'll tell them that you're there and not to bug you and that you're just sleeping for a little bit and that you're gonna get back on the road and um she goes i'm here all night so i'm not gonna leave until like eight so you know you should be fine and I thought that was cool um, and I did I um, covered up the windows so nobody could see and um, and then I slept there the only reason I woke up is because the subway people were starting to come in and it was like 8 39 yeah because I crashed um, and then I cleaned myself up got up cleaned myself up and um, the way I had the the bed is so an SUV you've got the front seats and then you have the, the the back seat and then you have the back where like you put stuff in right well the, the, when I have everything packed every, I before I packed it I made a bed underneath like blankets and pillows or whatnot and then I put my two baskets that I have like clothes and stuff in and then other stuff um, and it just so happened to wear I had just enough room on the top of all my boxes and stuff in the back to when I it's time for me to go to sleep I would take the baskets and slide it up over so all that space was cleared so it kind of worked a little bit of effort but it, it worked perfect because the bed was already made I just had to like lay down and get underneath the covers so that worked now I was in Idaho and then where else did I go so I traveled through Idaho and I literally just did the little corner of Idaho 
think it was Billings that I had stopped in. I mean, it's the first time I was ever in Idaho. It seemed okay. I didn't see too much, really, so I couldn't really tell you. Then I ended up getting into Utah. I don't know how it worked, but I just went. I used um, Google Maps for everything, and then it made me go into Utah. Let me tell you, if nobody's been to Utah, you need to go to Utah. Just for the air alone, it smells so good. It, uh, and I say that in not a creepy way. It doesn't smell like a perfume or any kind of flowers or anything. It just smells fresh. And maybe I shouldn't even say smells, but it just, when you inhale wherever I was in Utah, it felt like that was the air that we should all be like consuming. Um, when you think of air, to breathe in that stuff was it was good um, it was very green um, and it was gorgeous it was beautiful just like in the photos I think I saw one sister wife when I went and got gas um, she was all in her like garb or whatever and that was kind of interesting um, you know I know it sounds stupid but this is a girl that has never been anywhere so you know don't mind me so um, yeah, I mean, even the, the mountains around us, there was some that were snow-capped still. So uh, I drove through a little bit of that, and then I ended up going into Wyoming. Wyoming can suck a dick, all I'm saying. Um, it was hella hot. It was so hot. I just wanted to just, like, cry. I'm, uh, I don't know. And the worst part was is that my data wasn't working, and so I couldn't even, like, listen to the music. I couldn't do anything. So all the way through freaking Wyoming, it was just driving. It was me talking to my dog and driving and me looking at my phone saying, come on, or trying to refresh it, and I wasn't getting anything. Um, it was very dry. It was very rocky, um, hot. And I think this is where I started experiencing a little bit of humidity um, because it was starting to hit me. It was starting to hit. Uh, we have humidity, but not like this blanket that um, people in the other half of the United States deals with. And um, I was dying. It was excruciating and... I don't want to do it anymore unless I have air conditioning. I'm sure Wyoming's great, and I'm sure the only parts I went through were just like travel parts and stuff. I get that, but I didn't, I wasn't really impressed, you know. I'm sure there's some sweet, I mean, I'm sure there's some sweet uh, little places. And well, I, okay, I'll give, I'll give you two. I have photos. There's one or two like cool little like uh, bar, barns I think I've seen. Yeah, I think so. But other than that, they're all rocks and they're all like, they're not even like the nice rock formations like in Utah, in Wyoming, they kind of were trying to, it looked like it should have been, but it was kind of different. I don't know. There's some photos I'll put down for you. Then I ended up going to Nebraska. I was actually kind of excited about Nebraska. Now, mind you, a little, uh, uh, trivia about Carmen. I named one of my boys Amos, and that name came from a movie called Children of the Corn. I know, crazy. Um, so that Children of the Corn movie, they had it set that it was in Nebraska, and so I was really excited about going to Nebraska and like seeing corn. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I was really excited about that. So um, it took. Most of the day from Idaho through Utah into Wyoming. And as soon as I hit Nebraska, like literally over the border, my data's on, everything's working, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. So um, we got all that. And I was really excited about having all my data and shit. So, with that, and by the time I get to Nebraska, it was still light out, but I planned on staying in Nebraska 
to sleep overnight. <laughs> well, the scary thing about that was, so um, I'm looking, there was a, uh, an app that I used that kind of showed you where there were some rest stops or places where people can, like tr that people travel that you can, um, where the next rest stop is or how many stars it's gotten and all that jazz. Well, this particular rest stop was gonna be nothing but basically a gravel pit. This is where the big truckers would just come in to sleep and then leave. It was a no nonsense thing, no bathrooms, no nothing. And I was kind of done for the day. Um, it was hot and I just, it, it finally was cooling down because the, the sun was going down. Um, and the air, you know, was helping because all the windows were rolled down. So I got my phone, you know, you put it on that little chart, you know, your little contain holder that you put, that you stick on the window, whatever, you know, it sits on your console. And it's kind of sitting up here, well, you know, I'm driving, it's up here. And so I'm driving, I've got tank top on, my hair is in a bun, and I'm just doing my thing. So I'm driving, driving, driving. It's getting dark now, and the the um, map thing, the app thing basically tells me that the place I'm looking for is about a block away or so. So I'm waiting for the exit. I'm driving. I'm on the... No, I'm not on the freeway, but I just got off the exit, but I'm still going relatively fast. It just so happens to be in that area where you can go fast. As I'm driving, um, I can hear from a passenger window um, something smack. It just goes, and it smacks against the um, like the window frame because the window is open. It smacks, and as soon as I hear the smack, I felt something go down my down uh, my back. You know, because I've got the seat behind my back. It goes smack, and all I could think of was, oh my god, there's a bug. You know, and I'm trying, and it feels big. I'm just like, thinking about it just freaks me out. And so I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm trying to figure it out and try to get over there. I'm driving, and I'm driving relatively fast. So I'm slowing down a little bit, but I need to, my phone, uh, you know how it shuts off or goes to black when you haven't used it for a while. And um, I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm trying to figure out where it's at. I don't want to touch it, but I need to touch it. If it's anywhere near me, I don't want it to bite me. I just don't want it in the, in the car, blah, blah, blah. So I'm freaking out, freaking out. The phone goes black. So I go to push the phone. As I push the button of the phone, the bug is sitting on the button of the phone as I push the button I'm pushing the bug and I'm like Punk! and I pushed it hard enough because I'm pushing on my phone I pushed it hard enough to not only did I push the bug but I pushed it hard enough for the screen to come up and I'm like ah! <laughs> I freaked out that sucker fluttered away and landed on the passenger um, like floorboards and then I realized where I was at and so I turned and I got into that little gravel pit and I like Shh. I swear I must have looked like a mad woman because all these trucks are just sitting here and here comes the sesame me like Arr! and I have dust coming from the back and I'm just like Pfft, trying to get in there <laughs> the fucking bugs now mind you I've never seen a cicada if you haven't seen a cicada you think it's a June bug. And I thought it was a June bug. And I don't like June bugs. Cicadas are fucking ugly. I don't like their sound. I don't like anything about it. It's just, it's just a, ugh. and they're ugly and they make noise. I don't want it. No, thank you, ma'am. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that was going to be my lot in life if I were to stay out here. I don't know anything about it, so whatever. So I'm freaking out. I get out of the car. I have my little flashlight, and I open the door, and I can't find the stupid bug. And I'm like, I can't sleep without getting this thing out, because all you're going to think is that it's going to crawl all over you. Finally, I did see it, got it out of the car, and then I ended up getting back in the car and driving away, so it's not there. So I found my spot, and um, I was still kind of creeped out about it, but um, I survived. I lived, as you know. Um, so I did that and um, crawled into bed and kind of like kind of edged out or whatever and then went to bed.
So I wake up and I'm in Nebraska, so I'm excited. Um, I was hoping that I would run into a small town um, so I could take a little cute photo that would look like the town that was in the movie um, Children of the Corn. Um, I did, you know, wake up, freshen up, blah, 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 and I did drive around and I just so happened to get a perfect picturesque um, uh, a street that looked exactly like what I was thinking. It just so happened there was a cop that was driving by and I didn't want him to know that I had my phone on, you know, like in my hand. So I drove away. I didn't get the photo. So I was like, dang it. Um, but it's okay. Hopefully I'll go back and check out Nebraska again. Um, you never know. So, but it was kind of cool that I was able to drive through and, you know, fulfill a I don't know if it's a dream or not, but fulfill something. <laughs> um, then I ended up going through Missouri. When uh, I got to Missouri, I was supposed to, I was hoping to be, um, in Illinois by Friday, I think, because we were going to do a big, um, uh, shit, sorry, um, a big family reunion on Saturday, so I needed to be there by Friday just so I could be settled and ready for everybody else to show up. Um, so I think I was making pretty good time, um, as far as the day was concerned, not the time. I didn't get to my brother's until, like, like eight or nine it was kind of late. Um, so I got there and everybody was there. It was kind of nice to see everybody. All my nieces and nephews were huge compared to the little babies. I actually only saw, I've only, I only met two of them and they were like two and three and here they are. They were like 17, 18 or something. They were pretty old and, um, and then the other three I had never met, so that was kind of cool. And they all look like different versions of my brother, which is ironic and weird. Is ironic? No, maybe it's not ironic, but it's unsettling. Um, even with some of them that have like blue eyes or whatever, they you can I can see my brother. It's kind of cool. Um, so it was really nice, and I was finally there, and I finally got there. Thank God. <sighs> so I finally wake up. I'm finally in Illinois. Everything's great. I had been talking to um, the guy that I was um, hanging out with and dating in Bellingham and uh, everything seemed to be okay. You know, like he was happy that I was um, available or, you know, like um, made it safe and all this stuff. So that was kind of nice for him to do that. We stayed friends for a bit, but I think that kind of faded out. He had his own issues and problems, so it would, it would have never worked out. But there's, it's always funny how things happen for a reason. People are in your lives for a reason. He just so happened to be there. I'm assuming to help me when I needed it. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, um, the next day we got up, we got dressed, we got everything ready, and um, I was able to finally uh, meet up with uh, four of my brothers and sisters that I haven't seen since they were like eight or nine. It's a long story. We were all separated and all this stuff, but it was really nice. Everybody's like in their 30s, and it was just very surreal because they look like the little babies that I remember. But they're not babies. They had their own babies. I was able to, um, like meet my other nephews and nieces and stuff like that. So that was kind of really cool. Also, my stepdad, he actually came from Oklahoma to Illinois to be in the festivities as well. Um, he is my stepdad, so we did lose a bit of um, contact. So I didn't really know where he was or whatever, but he always, he, I mean, we knew or we always kind of kept in contact, but he always kept in contact more with, um, with Jerry, my brother. So it just happened that he was going to come out too. So everybody was there. It was great. Got a little too wasted. 
happens, what ifs. Um, so yeah, that was that. And from then on, I ended up staying um, for, so I got there beginning of June. I stayed until September, the end of September, June, July, August, September, so about three months. Um, during those three months, I, well, a couple days after everything was said and done, so the next week, I get a call from the dude that I was dating and saying that I got mail at his house. Like, how does, how do you get mail that's to me at your house? And he's like, I don't know, it was taped on my door. So he goes, do you want me to open it and check it out? I'm like, yeah. It is a freaking court thing that chicky that I had just basically friendship broke up with um she was trying to get a restraining order on me she uh, filed she used her own little money and filed um, this is how much she hated me this is how much it, it pissed her off um, that she was willing to, to to take money out of her bank account to get a restraining order on me I didn't do anything I mean, other than the post I made, I haven't tried, I haven't threatened her, I haven't tried to do bodily harm on her, I haven't done anything. And for her to be like, well, on uh, the paperwork, it basically said that I um, had threatened her and that she says that I have said derogatory things about her that weren't true. They were all true. Um, slander and all this other stuff. And I'm like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Get a hold of the um, court people and tell them what's going on, that I'm literally like across the country. I don't know what she's doing, but um, I wrote it all out, faxed it to them, sent it to them, made sure, because I, I, in reality, nothing's gonna happen. It doesn't go on my record or whatever, but I still didn't want it there. You know, like I didn't do anything and her MO basically is if I put a restraining order on you, then everybody's going to know it's for real and that the state believes me and not you. Um, and that's not true because if you can um, file and the other person doesn't show up, you usually are able to get it. So, but I wasn't showing up, so that was another thing. So, I gave all the stuff. I told him I was um, not in the state and that I'm not going to be even in that area as far as where she lives when I come back. So, it's not a big deal. Um, but, she continued. They, um, they switched the court date to a month later. I'm assuming to see if I would come back. Again, I call or text and call or called and... Um, emailed and all this stuff and told them that I am still out of the state, blah, blah, blah. And um, they pushed it out again another month. And then when they did that, um, she sent me another letter in her handwriting, care of my brother. So I don't know what, what, where she got this information, but she knew my address where I was. She knew my brother's first and last name. Um, this was single white female bullshit to like a hundred times. Um, and I don't know if I ever said anything about it, but I think the reason she was so mad and everything was so angry and I really think that she was in love with me. I know that sounds so stupid, but with everything that was going on, it, it literally was jealousy. She was jealous that I was spending time with somebody else, not her. And um, uh, there was little things that she would say throughout our friendship that I think that she was in love with me. And I think that she thought it was going to go a different way when I moved in. And it didn't. And it kind of pissed her off. And instead of just kind of reining things in and realizing that I don't swing that way, um, she just blew up. And um, me being saucy and stuff didn't help. So I, I think that's it. I think that's the reason that it drove her so much um, is that she just couldn't 
she couldn't handle that I got away with it. Whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. That's that's what everybody that I've ever talked to and I, myself have come to the conclusion. She was in love. She didn't get what she wanted. It didn't go the way she thought it was going to be. So she broke it off. And... Well, I broke it off, but I thought I was breaking up a relationship, a friendship, not a relationship. And um, I don't know what's going on. So I'm glad it didn't. I didn't stay any longer for anything else, because that's how people get stabbed when they're sleeping or something. I mean, I'm not joking. Like this is. It could have been a lot worse than just losing my shit. You know, my personal belongings. So yeah, it could have been a lot worse. But here she goes crazy again and finds out all this information about me of where I like physically live, the address and everything, my brother's name and stuff. So who knows? That just, it seems creepy. I felt safe there because I was so many states away. But then again, she's that person that'll drive, that'll jump in the truck and drive just to prove, just to drive by so I could see her and say, hmm, see, I told you, you can't get away from me kind of thing. Like that's the way she is. That I can, I can see that. Um, but I was, I felt safe enough. I wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, if she's going to be that crazy, who's the one that needs the restraining order? Um, so once I got that paperwork in the mail, I finally just let it all go. Um, to the judge. I told him, look, this is the stuff that she's doing. If you went into her, um, in her history, you'll notice that she's always filing some kind of restraining order to somebody. And I think they got it because at the end they ended up dismissing it. And, um, um, there was no restraining order or anything, but it was kind of stressful. I mean, I think she just did it because she just wanted life to be inconvenient for me. Um, that it was a little stress, but nothing that I couldn't handle or whatever. Again, I'm sure she's um, watching, so hey, hey, you didn't get me, bitch. Um, but yeah, so that was the end of that. Every once in a while, I'll get a phone call from her, or text, basically like "fuck you, fuck you," or you know, "kiss my ass" or something like that, and we'd go back and forth for a little bit, and then that would be it. Um, I didn't block anybody. I didn't do anything because it's always nice to know when somebody's calling, so you can see it. So I always kept them in there. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much it for for her. Um, she did make a couple Facebook accounts and tried to add me on so she could um, so she could uh, like keep track of me and stuff like that. Also I think um, once I deleted her and told everybody, especially common um, friends that I had introduced her to, she would go and right off the bat add them on because she can't keep a friend worth anything. Um, they all started deleting her because she was toxic and then she would make posts like, I didn't even like your friends anyway kind of thing. It's just stupid stuff. But I'm glad I'm done with it. It's 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 over. It's done. Um, I can say I am sad that I don't have that relationship. Uh, what I remember from that relationship was very sweet and somebody that I knew that I, that would always be there for me and that was nice and comforting. Um, Unfortunately, I, you know, I lost a friend and, and that's sad and I'm sad about that and I don't care if she's laughing or anything about that because, you know, too bad for her that she didn't, she didn't notice what she had because I was a really good friend and I only wanted the best for her, but, you know, just do you. I end up getting a better friend anyway, so it's okay. So, um, once I got there, it was like June and I was still trying to figure out what I was going to do. Um, I, I just got there, so I just figured I'd just hang out there. But unfortunately, ah, um, <laughs> 
Um, there's too many people, not enough room. Um, I shared a room with my niece. When she was gone, I would take the room so I'd have some privacy, but most of the time I was on the couch, and that's where all everybody wanted to be when they're playing their video games. And if you've had 13, 14, 15 year olds, you'll know exactly what that means. There's no sleep, there's no nothing. And so um, I didn't have much privacy, and that's what I need. I'm a true introvert, and I didn't have much privacy or any kind of wind down time. So I would just go to Walmart and um, check things out and do that and just drive around and take photos and just check the area out and kind of live a little you know I didn't have anywhere to go or anywhere to be and so I just really wanted to just be around I really wanted to hang out with my brother and stuff um, did I get that? No, I didn't get too much hanging out with my brother. I did. We went out a couple times. We went to a um, water park and stuff, but this man works really hard. He's got five kids, and so during the work week, he is up at the crack of dawn. He goes to work, and he comes back. When he comes home, he doesn't want to do anything. Totally understand. It's a physical job, so, um, you know, He's got a lot of mouths to feed and a lot of people that are counting on him. And then he's got his older brother, or older sister over there going, hey. So, yeah, I, I got to see him a little bit, but I'm okay with being able to see him um, in his own natural habitat and stuff like that. So it's cool. And then I did connect with all the kids, so I was able to, like, see them and know them. And hopefully, you know, they know their auntie a little bit. So, yeah, um, also during this time, um, I had met a guy before I left. I met him when I was living with the ex-husband right before I left, and um, we'll just call him L. Um, he wanted a relationship. Unfortunately, I was leaving. Um, there was no ifs, ands, or buts. I was going to leave, so... Um, I'm not going to stay around for a guy unless you're my husband or we're very, very serious. Um, so I was going to stay. I had plans. And um, we kept, uh, he would text every once in a while, but nothing big or whatever. And that was cool because I, I, it's not that I wasn't interested. He was a little bit too much. Um, he was like, what is that called? Like, five-star clinger or something like that like he is really clinger um there's nothing wrong with being a little clingy um I never have a guy that's been clingy most of them don't give a crap they're just like very nonchalant oh if you're here you're here if you're not you're not kind of thing It'd be nice to have somebody that like it's a little jealous and a little clingy a little not a lot a little um but from far away, I figured he's fine. You know, what, what harm can I do? Um, he is a smart man. He had a business. Uh, unfortunately, that fell through. He came from a good family. And so he was just trying to be a blue collar person now. And um, he was a, a, a gym rat. Um, he was a physique model back in the day. And so he... Um, he looked pretty good. His body was fit. He was a pretty good looking man. He was a couple years older than me. He seemed to have his shit together. So a little clingy and a little weird. He was just a little odd. You know, eccentric is the word. He was eccentric. Um, and that's fine. I, I don't mind those people either. But anyway, he got word that I wasn't working and that I was still kind of traveling and stuff. So he started after about a month, month and a half of me being in Illinois, he started supplementing my income. He would send me money. I mean, if you're going to send me money, go ahead, send me money, right? Um, he, 4th of July, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I said, sure. Um, by this time, we had been talking every day. Um, a couple hours a day and just caught up with whatever was going on and um, he'd make sure I was fine everything was good and uh, um, not one time did I ever ask him for anything he's always offered um, I don't play guys I don't do that um, but 
we had been officially a boyfriend girlfriend before I even accepted any money from him. He was a, uh, he asked me for me to be his girlfriend. I said yes, and I said, what the hell, you know, one, if it works out when I get back, that's great. That's a great relationship, right? You know, like there's some kind of trust and everything going on. If it doesn't work out, no skin off my nose because I'm not there. Hopefully I won't be too attached. And um, it just, it, it, it had, didn't work out, right? Um, so he'd send me enough for like gas and food and, and whatever. I had a little bit, I had some, some savings, so it was okay, but that helped. So I just used that. Um, and I stayed until the end of September because my dad, when he was there, and I kept, I kept, uh, we talked over the phone as well, but um, during the first week, he's like, well, when you're done hanging out here, if you want to, if you're not going right back, why don't you come to Oklahoma? Um, and you can hang out there. I've got an extra room. There's, you know, you can stay as long as you need to figure out what you want to do. And, um, uh, figure it out, you know, from there. And I had told him I was really interested in going to school. And he was like, well, this would be the best time to do it because you have your own space, your own room. Um, and they've got good schools out here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that put put something in my head. I think he was kind of lonely too, so it was kind of nice, you know, and I really didn't have any obligations. I really didn't want to leave my kids. Again, they're newly um, out of the household, so I really didn't want to be that far. I really thought I was just going to go to Illinois for a few months. I, truthfully, I thought it was going to be a couple of weeks, but I ended up breaking um, one of my teeth I chipped my tooth and so I had to wait to get it fixed. That's why I was there so long. So I fixed that um, and then I had, yeah, I had to wait for, you know how dentists are, it takes forever to get into one and when you're there they want to do it in certain steps and all this other stuff. So it took me a while for me to get that done and that's why it took me so long to even leave Illinois. Um, and so, yeah, and side note, all my brothers and sisters that did show up, they lived in Indiana. So um, that's why it's kind of cool to be in one spot because everybody showed up. You know, dad from Oklahoma and the kids from Indiana. So finally, I agreed that I was going to go to dad's house in Oklahoma. And then um, before that, I started calling um, schools. I just like Googled schools out there for makeup artistry. I wanted to be a makeup artist because of all the YouTube bullshit. I was and am addicted to makeup. I can look at a um, eyeshadow palette and get so excited about the color stories or just anything like that. I want to know it. I want to use it. I want to try it. And um, I was just, this is what's going to happen. This is my, the, basically this was my time. This is when I'm going to be able, here's, here's my story. Here's my, here's the thing I was going to do. I was going to become a makeup artist, right? I move, um, make some money here, move back to Pacific Northwest. I was going to move to Oregon, find a little spot, even if it was a little shit, sh shit shack, because I didn't care. I loved it there. And I just was going to live there and then become a makeup artist, like for um, weddings and stuff. Like it sounded good, but the more I started like thinking about it and Googling it and stuff like that, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to make enough money as a freaking wedding makeup artist. Not the kind of money I need, right? So I was just like, crap, what am I going to do? I still wanted to be a makeup artist, but I just, you know. I'll figure it out. Maybe I have to get another side job or something, right? So I finally found a school that I liked. I've already talked to them a couple times. So they knew I was going to be moving out to Oklahoma for a little bit. And then I, um, it must have, it must have been on a work weekday 
because my brother had to leave early. I'd get up early and tell him goodbye, my sister-in-law. And then it was the first day of school for the kids. So I took photos for their mom and then they all got, they all went, you know, hugged them and stuff. And I saw them off on their last day of school and stuff like our first day of school. So that was kind of bittersweet. Um, but I was barely getting any sleep out there. I mean, the kids are bouncing all over the place. I forgot how much kids are.